Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to pressure test a small two-cycle carburetor. So when I say small two-cycle carburetor, it's typically a carburetor like this with diaphragms in it. You'll usually find these carburetors on chainsaws, trimmers, small rototillers, and other equipment. Now the most common work that you need to do on these carburetors is to replace the diaphragms and the needle valve. And after you do that, what you want to do is test your carburetor with a pressure tester to make sure that the needle valve is sealing properly. And you can also use this pressure tester here to test the carburetor while it's on your equipment. If you can reach the connector and test it right on there, it saves you from removing the carburetor. So in the first test here, what I'm going to do is test this carburetor. What you want to do is hook up the tester to the intake line of your carb. So if you look at this carburetor here, it's got two connectors. One is for the impulse and one is for the intake of the fuel. So now grab your tester, connect the line. And what I'm going to do now is pump it up to approximately 7 PSI. Right over here. I'm going to leave it like this for a while. So what you want in this test here is the needle to stay at seven. You don't want it to go down from the pressure. And as you can see, it's holding pretty good. So we know that the needle valve is good. So I know that this carb here passes the test. I'm just going to disconnect it. And once you disconnect it, the pressure will go down. Now I have another carburetor that is similar. It does have an impulse connector and the intake. Again, I will just connect it into the intake. This carburetor here is off of a steel MS250C chainsaw. And again, I'm going to pump it up to seven PSI. And again, this carburetor is holding perfectly. So I know that the needle valve is good in this carb and also that there are no leaks where the covers go on the carb as well. Now what I have here is a carburetor. It is brand new, but it does have a primer bulb and I'll show you the different tests you can do on this carb. Now, first of all, what you want to do is connect your pressure tester to the intake part of the carb, which is this one here. And again, I'm pumping up to seven PSI. And again, this carburetor is holding perfectly. Now, if you have a carburetor like this with a primer bulb, a second test you can do is push the primer bulb. And each time you push the primer bulb, the pressure will go down. But as the pressure goes down, what you're looking for is for the needle to stay where it landed. So I'll just do a demo here. Push the primer once needle goes down but it is staying down or staying at the level where it dropped and again if i push the primer bulb the same thing should happen and the needle stays there that's what you want and again so it passes the second test now another test you can do with these carburetors with a primer bulb is hook into the primer connector which is right here or the purge connector they call it. And what I'm going to do with this test is push the primer bulb and the pressure will go up as I do that. And each time I push, what I'm looking for is for the needle to not go back down. And you can clearly see that it's passing all the tests. That needle is not moving at all. Now, when you do the test with the primer bulb, as I just showed, if it does not work for you, let's say you can't get any pressure in the tester or it won't release, it won't hold, what you may have to do is replace the small check valve underneath the primer bulb here. You can see it, it's kind of reddish or pink. And you can actually buy these depending on the carb you have. This one here is for a smaller carburetor from a weed eater. And this one here is part number 176-64-1. Now check the specs of your carb before you go and buy one of these check valves because they will be different from carburetor to carburetor. Now sometimes to save time, you can actually pressure test the carburetor right on the chainsaw or the equipment that you're working on. So on this Husqvarna 61, there is only one connector on the carburetor. It makes it easier for you. There is no second connector. 
what you want to do now is remove the fuel line from that connector. Now to stop the fuel from coming out of the fuel line, you can plug it or just loosen the gas cap quickly and retighten it. It will let the pressure out. And as you see now, the fuel line is not leaking fuel. And now just reach in and plug your tester right on the carburetor that's installed on the chainsaw. And again, I'm going to pump it up to 7 PSI. And I'm going to wait a few seconds here. And as you can see, it's holding the pressure quite well. And once you've done that, just disconnect your pressure tester, reconnect your fuel line. Now what I have here in my hand is a carburetor that will fail that test. I'm going to pressure test it just to show you what happens. Again here, I'm connecting it into the intake connector and I'm going to try to pump it up to seven. And as you can see here, I cannot get any reading at all. The needle just keeps coming down. That means there is a major leak in this carburetor. Now, sometimes to find out where the leak's coming from, what you can do is dip the carburetor in fuel or water, pump it up. You should see bubbles as to where this is coming from. Now, I do have some fuel in the container here just to show you. If you use this method, again, be extremely careful because this is highly flammable. Now I'm going to put the carb into the fuel like this. And as I pump into the carburetor to pressure test it, you can see the air bubbles coming out. So there's definitely some leakage going on somewhere in the carb. If that's the issue, you would be better to replace the whole carburetor kit, including the hardware. And what I mean by that is a complete carburetor kit like this. It's got all the diaphragms and the hardware are all these pieces over here, which includes the needle valve. Now, this small needle valve over here will be responsible for whether your carburetor keeps the pressure that you pump in or not. And also, if your metering diaphragm is stiff, it could create a leak as well because it will be constantly pushing down on the metering lever that will open up the needle valve and this is exactly what I mean over here this is the metering lever the needle valve is attached to it you'll have a diaphragm like this sit right over there so if the diaphragm is stiff and pushed down it will be pushing on the metering lever and lifting up the needle valve and flooding your engine so if your carburetor doesn't pass the test and it leaks all the pressure that you put into it, the first thing you should do is replace the carburetor kit and make sure you get the kit with all the hardware here. And if your carburetor still does not run properly and cannot keep the pressure after you put in your kit, you may have to replace the entire carburetor. Now there's a few tips I want to give you here before I end off the video and that is even though you do a pressure test on your carburetor and it holds the pressure, it does not mean that that carburetor will run properly. Basically with the test, we're just testing to see if it holds the pressure. So we're really checking to see how the needle valve is performing and if the carburetor kit is any good at all. So just keep that in mind when you fix stuff that just doing the pressure test is not necessarily indicative that your carburetor will be good even though it holds the pressure. And I'm sure you guys are also wondering if the carburetor doesn't hold the pressure, what are the symptoms going to be on my equipment? Well, what happens most of the time is that your engine will flood itself. Also, it won't idle properly because it's getting too much fuel. Now, if you start your equipment, you run it full blast, you may not notice, but then when you go to let it idle because it's got so much fuel going into it, it might just die. And in my experience, I've seen chainsaws where the carburetor was leaking so badly like that, that it was just flooding the chainsaw immediately. There was no sputter whatsoever. Now, another very important thing that you need to know when you pressure test the carburetor is that right after you put a new carb kit, if you do pressure test it, sometimes it will not hold the pressure. Now, it doesn't mean that the carburetor is bad. So what you need to do in that instance is try to run it on your chainsaw and sometimes after it runs for just a few minutes, if you disconnect the hose and reconnect your tester, you will see that it will hold the pressure. And sometimes it's even recommended to do a proper test to put a few drops of fuel in the intake connector so that the needle gets wet. 
So don't write off a carb right away for not holding the pressure if it's totally dry inside. Like I said, you can run your engine for a bit or you can dump a few drops of fuel in the intake connector to get that needle wet. And oftentimes I've tested carbs with a fresh rebuild or actually brand new carbs. They did not hold the pressure, but after they ran for a few minutes, they held the pressure quite well. So these are the basic tests I do in the shop here. However, after fixing small engines for many, many years, sometimes you will know the symptoms of a carburetor before you even plug in the pressure tester. However, it still is nice to have in the shop just to confirm certain diagnoses. And it's definitely a must-have tool in the shop. So in conclusion, guys, if you have a carburetor that leaks, what you want to do first is to replace the carburetor kit and the needle valve and the hardware that comes with it. So thanks again for watching, guys. If you have any tips to add to this pressure test I did today, please comment under the video. Also, make sure you're subscribed and to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And have yourselves a great day.